Welcome. Welcome to today's liturgy, celebrating the patron saint of our college, St. Thomas Aquinas. Honored as a doctor of the church, Thomas is considered the church's greatest theologian and philosopher, as well as the patron of Catholic school education. It is quite fitting that we should contribute the celebration of Catholic Schools Week with this patronal mass. St. Thomas Aquinas said, wonder is the desire for knowledge. I remain grateful to the many religious communities, clergy and faculty, both past and present, who have embraced the gift of wonder in their ongoing commitment to provide academic excellence in a faith-filled environment. When looking at all the good that has been accomplished over more than 800 years of Dominican service and education, we are grateful to all of those who have gone before us in faith to preach the gospel in word and in deed. Under the guidance of Mother Eveline Mackey, our Grand Rapids Dominican community opened the first Catholic co-educational college in the United States to be run by a congregation of religious women, our very own Aquinas College. Our Grand Rapids Dominicans continue to respond to the human condition in its desire to know truth, the truth of God's mercy and love. We continue to advance the Catholic intellectual tradition here at Aquinas College. We are so grateful for our Grand Rapids Dominicans who 135 years ago began this college as a ministry to provide for the educational needs of the community and to continue to faithfully serve us today. Thank you, sisters. And I can say from the bottom of my heart, there's not a day that goes by that I don't draw inspiration from those wonderful ladies. Thank you so much for what you have done for us and for the college. Our sisters have seen us through a lot of challenging times over the years, and this year is unlike anyone in living memory. These are some of the same challenges that the sisters have brought us uh, through in times past, and they shine as an example for us in our current reality. It takes a community to come through this, and we're coming through this together. With that in mind, I want to acknowledge with sincere gratitude all current and former faculty and staff for their commitment to Aquinas College and to our community. Thank you. Thank you also to our students and our alumni who have made sacrifices to look out for each other in the common good of all. Thank you, students, for making Aquinas College your place of wonder, pursuing truth in light of faith and serving our community so, in so many capacities. And thank you for what you've done to look out for, uh, for your fellow students. This has not been an easy semester uh, or an easy academic year, and we still have a semester to get through. Um, but, you know, I have a lot of confidence that you will help us get through that. This liturgy celebrating our patron would not be possible without many people. I just want to name a few. Thank you to Jordan Malone over there, who is our uh, student pastoral musician, for gracious, graciously making the celebration so beautiful with your wonderful skill. Every time Jordan plays, he makes the space he's in that much better. Thank you to Terry and Campus Ministry for hosting this college celebration of all that is great about being in a community of saints. And finally, I want to extend a gesture of gratitude to our Dominican College chaplains, Father Stan Grongowski and Father Bob Keller. Your prayers enliven us and encourage us onward, and I can't wait till we can see you wandering around the campus in, as, uh, as you have in the past. So thanks to all of you, and happy feast of St. Thomas Aquinas.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord be with you. As we gather together to celebrate one of the great historical figures of our church, we do so recognizing that he faced the same things that we do. He faced fear. He faced temptation. He faced sin. Let us begin by asking for the same faith and grace to pursue that for which each and every one of us has been called. Lord Jesus, you teach us words of wisdom and truth. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you guide us on the way of holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you fill us with your peace. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Let us now join the angels praising God's glory. O oh God, you made St. Thomas Aquinas outstanding in his zeal for holiness and his study of sacred doctrine. Grant us that we may understand what he taught and imitate what he accomplished 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold in view of her is a little sand and before her silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Now God grant I speak suitably and value these endowments at their worth, for he is the guide of wisdom and the director of the wise, for both we and our words are in his hand, as well as all prudence and knowledge of crafts. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples. Do not be called rabbi. You have but one teacher, and you are all brothers. Call no one on earth your father. You have but one father in heaven. Do not be called master. You have but one master, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. But whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. We begin this afternoon's preaching with a bit of shameless, self-serving promotion on behalf of campus ministry. All of us, well, on Monday, Father Bob and I were in here taping part of a program that all of us took part in Terry, Robert, and Elizabeth Calcaterra, one of our students. And this is about St. Thomas Aquinas. Not St. Thomas Aquinas. It was about St. Martin de Porres. St. Martin de Porres was as different from St. Thomas Aquinas as you could possibly imagine. How can we possibly compare potentially and arguably the greatest intellect in the last 2,000 years and an illegitimate mulatto in Peru? It's really hard to find a whole lot in common with the two of them, other than the fact that we do recognize them as saints. But as we look more deeply, and as children of Aquinas, we should and must look more deeply, we find that in fact, The greatness of Aquinas was not limited to his brilliant literature, his brilliant philosophy and theology. The greatness of Martin de Porres was not his humility or his service or his self-sacrifice. The greatness of both of these was their humble service to God. Thomas was not writing to get tenure. Martin was not serving in order to be recognized. Thomas is a model for us and as our patron shows us how to be humble. And we hear this in our first reading. As we are urged to seek wisdom. Now, wouldn't it make more sense to seek instead the knowledge that'll take us 
through the semester, to pass the class, to get through the papers and the exams? No. That's not the result that God seeks from us. God seeks instead that we take who we are and allow God to mold us into who we can be. To truly become our best selves. To truly not recognized by one another, but truly to become holy. Holiness, as we know, means that we are willing to be truthful with ourselves and with God. And in this truth, we find our purpose. And in this truth, we find our life. Thomas tells us that humility is, in fact, truth. To know what we can do and to do it is to be humble. We learn this from Thomas. We can see this in Martin de Porres, but we have received this from Jesus Christ. Let us offer our needs. Father most generous, in Christ Jesus, your Son, you have given us all things. Grant that our lives and our relationships give you glory, as did the life of our patron, St. Thomas Aquinas. We pray to the Lord. You are the healer of nations. Heal our hearts so that we may bear your healing to others for the life of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord you have graced the Dominican order in over 800 years of mission. May we who benefit from the riches of this shared life of prayer, study, community, and service be a source of blessing for others, we pray to the Lord. Lord Your generosity overflows in the lives of those who rely upon you. Bless our benefactors with joyful hearts and a, tr and a tranquil spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord you call us to perceive the truth of your revelation. May our students delight in the pursuit of truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord yes. You are the way, the life, and the truth. May those you have called to religious life and to ordained ministry respond generously to preach the gospel in love and fidelity. We pray to the Lord. Lord yes. You are the font of eternal life. Make eternal happiness spring up in those who have died, especially Rick Dennings, Debbie Browns, Bruno Cook. We pray to the Lord. Lord Merciful God, hear us in these our prayers that have been spoken and those that remain in our hearts. 
Guide us truly to the fulfillment of your love for us. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Brothers and sisters, please pray that these, our gifts, will be made acceptable to our all-merciful God. Amen. As we celebrate the divine mysteries, O Lord, May the Holy Spirit fill us with that light of faith which he constantly enlightened, blessed Thomas, for the spreading of your glory through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, all merciful and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Thomas Aquinas, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen us by the example of his holy life. Teach us by his words of preaching and keep us safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all creation rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a perfect and pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts 
we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon this oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas Aquinas, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of your family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your, your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good.
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. We now pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always freed from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but instead on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Refreshed by heavenly food, we humbly implore you, O Lord, that attentive to the teaching of Thomas Aquinas, we may abide at all times in thanksgiving for the gifts we have received through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Let us go in peace. <laughs>